I'd like to invite the brethren to open your Bibles and the Gospel according to Luke, on chapter 23, Luke 23, from verse 38, Gospel of Luke 23, verse 38. Thus says the word of our God. And an inscription also was written over him in letters of Greek, Latin, and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. Then one of the criminals who were hanged blasphemed him, saying, If you are the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Do not even fear God, seeing you are in the same condemnation, and we indeed justify, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus saying to him, Assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Let's pray, my brethren. Lord God, once again, we, pray, we plead for the power of the blood of the Lord Jesus upon us. We ask for your blessing, Lord, in the meditation of your word, and that you may help, Lord, to apply to our lives for the honor and for the glory of your name. We pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. My brethren, this text that we just read, obviously, speaks about the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus. It was the way in which he gave his life for us. And we know that because of this reason, the Lord left his glory and came to the world. He came to save us. He humiliated himself. In Philippians, when we read on chapter 2, we see that Jesus he did get attached to the fact that he was like God, but he emptied himself and humbled himself and took the shape of a servant like us, like men, mortal, and as a servant, he was obedient to the Father in everything, even to death on the cross. That's why God exalted him in, in a sovereign way. And we see here the reason why Jesus came. There is a problem. The entire humanity that makes no distinction what, what country you come from, where our social class, where you were born in a palace of the king of England, or on the most humble town in Africa. The sin affects all of us, and because of sin, all of us are paid uh, with death, which is the wage of sin. That's why Jesus came. He came to save us from our sins, and to redeem us from those sins, and to give us life, and to give the right to life. And here we see the price that he chose to pay for us. And it is important for us to emphasize that the Lord Jesus himself told his disciples, I give my life for myself, I give it to you. So he received power from the Father. He had power to give his own life and to take it back. And he chose to give his life and we read, we didn't read the entire chapter, but hours before, on the previous night, before Jesus was imprisoned, one of his disciples tried to defend him, took the sword and tried to attack one of the guards, one of the servants of the high priest that came to imprison Jesus. And what Jesus told him, calm down, put your sword away. Don't you know that I could pray to my father and he could have sent 12 legions of angels? My brethren, the Bible describes in a passage 
the king Hezekiah and prophet Isaiah prayed and the Lord sent one angel to deliver Israel and this angel alone killed 185,000 soldiers of the king of Syria and a legion has 1 million 12 legions have 12 million of angels now do the math it's sufficient to kill the entire population of the world today and there are many left imagine the population in the times of Jesus the population of the world so he chose to be in that situation and we always speak about the crucifixion but we few times we meditate on this way of execution. For example, in the country in which we live today, there, there is a capital punishment, which is a sentence to death. But it's very different than the execution through a crucifixion, Roman crucifixion. Crucifixion was a way of execution that would cause the most suffering the most humiliation and would serve as an example for the ones, the criminals that committed the crimes, the most terrible crimes, so that they would, so it would be an example of the entire population. The way in which the, the nails would go through the hands of the condemned, the vital heart arteries were spared so they would not just bleed out and die in three minutes. They would stay there for hours and hours. The hyperextension of the arms on that position, you neutralize your breathing muscles. So in order for you to breathe, you have to use your legs in order to attempt to breathe. That's why when they wanted to haste the death of the, the peace person being cruci crucified, they would break the legs. And so when you broke the legs, it would ca cause more uh, pain over the, the, the nails. But Jesus chose this suffering, and there was an execution that was very public, very different than the executions today. They are reserved normally for the family of the victim, and just a few people. The Lord Jesus was crucified outside of the limits of the city of Jerusalem. In a public place, everybody saw. In the majority of the time, the condemned were crucified naked. They were unrobed and crucified. And there was Jesus. The whole population that was in Jerusalem watching that spectacle and the, the word of the Lord tells us that there were two other prisoners that were crucified one on the right side and the other one on the left side of Jesus and those two prisoners they had different uh, behaviors they chose paths that were very different they were both in a very desperate situation. They, they were sure to be dead in a very short time. But one of the prisons, prisoners, as we read, if we read the entire chapter, we would realize that he began to confront Jesus and mock Jesus. And he, he would say, if you are the Christ, save yourself. However, the other one made a different choice. He reproached the other one and he hum humbled himself before Jesus and he said, Jesus, remember me when you, when you enter into your kingdom. And my brethren, all of us, all men have this, make, make the same decision. We have to make the same decision before the cross of Jesus. In the same way as Jesus went to the cross publicly and there he, sh he shared, shed his life for us, for love to our lives, to show to us the chance of redemption. We, as ourselves, we make, make, need to make one of those two decisions that the two prisoners made, make this choice, and no one else can make this decision for us. Our parents cannot do this for us. We cannot do this for our children. 
But only each one of us, at one point in time of our lives, we have to answer to the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus for us. And the desire of the Lord is that we make the good choice of turn back to Jesus and to humble ourselves before Him, recognizing our condition as sinners that we are and our inability to get getting rid of sin and to ask for His forgiveness. This is the greatest gift of the love of God He gave us. He gave us this forgiveness that cost us so, such a high price to Lord Jesus. He gave us freely. We only need to open up our hearts and leave aside our own human reason, our ego, and receive the redemption from the hands of the Lord Jesus and receive grace in forgiveness. What the Lord requires of us is that we open our hearts and that we recognize our condition and the wonderful power of the grace of the Lord Jesus to save us and to transform our lives. And this fact illustrates clearly that there is time for all things under the sun. We need, as soon as we are faced with the Lord Jesus, we need to make this decision. In the same way as the, the word of the Lord is proclaimed to us, we should not leave it for tomorrow or leave it for later, but in the silence of our own bedroom, we need to turn to the Lord and make this Take this decision. If we receive this gift, if we receive the Lord Jesus our, as our Savior, a Lord and Savior, and we surrender to Him, or if we prefer not, not if we think that this would be a bad choice for us that we could do, not to recognize the greatest greatness of the grace of the Lord demonstrated on the cross for us, the worst choice that any human could make. Sadly, this man, as we read here in this text, he was on the left-hand side of the Lord Jesus. He was so close to Jesus. Like, but a few people, but he did not realize how the person who he was so close to, sadly, his eyes were covered to the grace of God that was being offered to him. And sadly, you have the entire eternity to repent from this terrible decision that he made. But we, my brethren, we have the choice. The choice is still being given to us. We are here. We can, each one of us, can make this choice. And we may need to make this decision as quickly as possible. It's not a decision that we need to live, it, live for tomorrow or we should live for tomorrow. The tomorrow has not been promised to us. I'm speaking with, with the brethren here. I don't know, but I don't know if later tonight I'm going to have a heart attack and not be with you tomorrow. The Lord knows our time and the Lord knows how many days each one of us have left. But the Lord and His love and His mercy is renewed to us, each, to each one of us, every morning. And we just need to give creed to His word and to turn to Him with humbleness and to leave our own personal ideas and human reason to the side and receive with simplicity like a child would receive the word of salvation, of good news of the gospel that is capable of saving us because the word of the Lord is living and efficient and powerful to operate in us and our will and, and the, the performance of the will of the Lord in our lives. So, my brethren, in this passage, we see clearly 
how important it is to make this choice. And what the Lord wants is that each one of us, of our family members, that all of us would make the right, the good choice, which is to walk with the Lord Jesus and to give our lives to the Lord Jesus and to receive Him as He is. He is the Lord of Lords and He is the Lord of our lives. But He is a Lord that loves us. He alone went to the Christ and paid His price because He chose to give us this chance he chose to redeem us, not because of anything that we may have done that was good or that we could do for him, but simply because he is good and that he loved us and his love will last forever. So for us, that's reason uh, for joy, because we know that we can deposit all our trust in the Lord and in spite of any difficulty or of any situation of infirmity, of financial difficulty or difficulty in the family that may occur in our lives, we just need to remember of this scenery that was painted to us here in the Word of God. We see the love of God that has been proven to us in spite of any circumstance. So we can place our trust in the Lord and remain on this path knowing that He is powerful to protect us and to rescue us to Himself until the day of His return. Amen, my brother. We're going to sing yet another song tonight, uh, this moment, and I'll hand the word to Pastor Renewed later on for the closure of this service.
Irmãos, a paz do Senhor. Our brethren, peace of the Lord. Let's have a word of glorification to the Lord for what He, the Lord God, has done in our behalf, sending His Son to die for our lives in our place. A high price was paid, so it is a reason for us to glorify the Lord. Lord, we praise your name. We thank you for such great love. We exalt you, Lord, for your word tonight. It was a good word revealed by your Holy Spirit. We exalt you, Lord, because we are privileged people, because we recognize that we are nothing, we don't deserve anything, but you are good towards us, Lord. We exalt you, Lord, for the beauty of your holiness. We exalt you because you are sovereign. We exalt you, Lord because you are the Lord of, of hosts, the one that has gone ahead of our battles. That's why we exalt you, Lord, for your grace upon our lives. We praise you, Lord, because it is good to serve you, Lord. We adore you for this night. We praise you, Lord, for your mercies, which are the reason why we are not destroyed, Lord. We praise you because our heart is thankful, Lord, for so great salvation. We praise you for everything in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord gave two spiritual gifts and the gifts for the service the Lord was going to be showing to us, calling our attention to the fact that we, so that we may pay attention to what is being the instruction of the Lord regarding the fact that we need to be choosing the better person, which is to be in the presence of the Lord. So our choices, our, doubt, our doubts, everything that we need, we need to seek in the Lord. Because when we choose something wrong, then the harm comes. Then the failure comes, and with this, many times we are trying to justify or blame someone here and there. But look, there's nothing that can justify our failure other than through the blood of Jesus. That's why he was sent to die in our place and take our place. So we need to choose always, above all, to give priority to the salvation in Jesus. Amen? So the gifts, they show exactly this. People making bad choices and later on going through difficulties and and harm in their lives, in every aspect, in their secular life, in their health, and much more in their spiritual life. Amen. So let us let's take uh, this service and the message to tonight. Cause us to give, not take for granted what God gave to us. Let us close and pray for the service. And after the final prayer, if you still need a, an assistance, uh, uh, some sort of direction and prayer, we will be here at your disposal. Lord, receive our service, our adoration to you, Lord. We praise you for all your servants who were willing to be in the service, all the ones who pray for the service. And we ask, Lord, that our, what we are hoping for so that we may be able to achieve them, Lord, and that we may leave the service even closer to you, Lord. Visit each home here represented, operating in health, operating in salvation, and confirming, Lord, our call, and that we may have in our lips a song of praise to you, Lord. Give us a night of pray of rest this is the prayer that we say in the name of Jesus and in your name we say that wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the love of God our eternal Father and sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit we pour out upon all of us now and forevermore Amen
Meus irmãos, somente Abed, confirmando aqui, just confirm uh, here, sábado, né, avisou, Pastor Sábado uh, informed uh, uh, the Brethren on Thursday semana, that this próximo, weekend and, the, and this coming weekend we are not going to have passado, um uh, service né, in presence. Last week, I have a brother that who was in the church, and uh, the following day, he began to have symptoms, and he, do the, he did the exam, and he was found to have COVID. So, in this case, we chose in a caution to avoid the service in presence, and we're going to give priority to the service in Zoom. So, let's pray for our church so that the Lord may protect the brethren protecting the ones who are sick that need to be the target of our prayer and our care so we ask the brethren to be paying attention to this we're coming to the end of the year a year in which the Lord once again was able to minister his acts of justice and on our behalf the ones who paid attention to the instruction of the Lord the Lord has preserved them, preserved their faith and family, and His name has been glorified. If anybody needs a prayer, we are here at your disposal. And otherwise, we're going to open up our microphones and and you know, want to wish everyone the peace of the Lord. Peace the Lord. Pode ser o sábado. Pode ser o irmão. Deus abençoe. Pode ser o sábado. Pode ser o Deus abençoe. Pode ser o Senhor. 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 Pode ser o Oi? Só alegria aí, né? Você tá longe Ele do. Você tá rindo da Roselene. Não, nós estamos juntos aqui, ué. Pois é, mas vocês estão aqui ou estão lá em Boston? Estamos aqui. Sim, aqui é onde? Aí, aqui ou lá? Aqui na Flórida? Aqui na Flórida, em casa. Pois é, o que eu tô falando lá tá um frio, rapaz.